Anyone who's experienced hot summer days knows that there's a difference between what the thermometer may read and how hot it feels. That's because how we experience heat is more than just temperature. Today, we're gonna go over the simple ways you can measure environmental heat effectively to prevent heat illnesses. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Although we depend on air temperature as the main factor for heat exposure, we all know that's only one factor in how hot it feels outside. Hi, I'm Rachel with Ally Safety. Let's look at some different ways that you can measure heat stress to help prevent heat illnesses. To start, the heat index is a common way to measure heat stress. It's supposed to be measured in the shade and combines air temperature and relative humidity to represent how hot the conditions feel at rest. The heat index doesn't account for the effects of wind or radiant heat sources, like sunlight, which can increase heat index values by up to 15 degrees. So it only partially describes the heat that people actually experience. There are actually four factors that contribute to how we actually feel heat, and they are air temperature, obviously, humidity. High relative humidity makes it difficult for the body to cool itself through sweating. Radiant heat, heat from sunlight or artificial heat sources, such as furnaces, and air movement. Anyone who's ever stood near a house fan can appreciate this. A good environmental heat assessment should account for all four factors, not just temperatures. That's why OSHA recommends the use of wet bulb globe temperature monitors, WBGTs, or also called WIBJITs. These can help to measure environmental heat and give us a clearer picture of the heat that people are actually experiencing. Widget monitors are nothing new and were developed in the 1950s after heat-related illnesses affected the U.S. armed services during the 1940s. After the implementation, there was a significant reduction in heat-related illnesses during basic training. Today, NIOSH, the ACGIH, and the U.S. military and many athletic organizations recommend widgets for measurement of heat stress in workers and athletes. Widget devices, like this handheld one, actually contain three different thermometers. A thermometer to measure the ambient air temperature, a natural wet bulb thermometer, which is also housed right here, to measure the potential for evaporative cooling, and a black globe thermometer, which measures radiant heat. Today, I'll be using heat stress monitors using a series from Reed Instruments. Other models may look slightly different, so if you have one from another manufacturer, always follow the manufacturer's instructions about setup, calibration, and use. You can use widgets with a heat stress meter when you're dealing with environments like outdoor in hot and humid environments, or indoors where there may be a foundry, mill, or similar environments that may have radiant heat sources. A handheld widget like this one is great to quickly and accurately determine the widget temperature. The widget instrument should be placed close to the actual work location. If your work location covers a broad area, do a walk around inspection to get a sense of the total measurements. You can cycle through different measurements and get a much more accurate reading on what the actual heat exposure is and what it feels like. The widget calculates the different weightings of the three measurement to represent what we actually feel rather than just what the ambient temperature is. Use the widget number to determine how long of an exposure is safe based on the activity or the type of work being done. Data logging meters like this one tend to work the same, but are bigger because they store more data. You can use them to record a number of different readings over a period of time. This is useful when you know you're working in high temps and you want to track and record the changes as well as potentially alert people when temperatures are high enough to be dangerous so that workers can take precautions like water, rest, and shade to avoid heat illnesses. There are also personal heat stress monitors which can be worn on the body and can be set to alarm when the heat stress measurements hit a certain point. This can be helpful because it helps people know when the heat is getting to a dangerous level so they can take precautions to cool down and prevent heat illnesses. Lastly, we have this handheld heat index stopwatch. These are compact and lightweight, and as you may have noticed, it has no globe thermometer on top, meaning it reads the heat index, just temperature and humidity, and calculates it. It's best for cloudy conditions and low wind. 
Like I mentioned before, the widget temperature and duration of exposure should be limited by what you determine to be safe based on your workplace conditions. This will depend on the type of activity or work being done. If you want information on how to figure out what limits to set, I've added a document outlining that process from NIOSH in the resources section. Remember, water, rest, and shade are never a bad idea, so allow and require more frequent rest breaks. Install fans or air conditioning equipment, develop flexible working schedules that allow for less physically demanding work to be carried out during the hotter temperatures. Distribute non-alcoholic, non-caffeinated cold drinks, and recommend that employees wear light, cool clothing that breathes when appropriate. In addition, consider developing an acclimatization program. Studies have proven that many people who are accustomed to high temperature and humidity environments can perform within these conditions much better than those who aren't. So give those who aren't the opportunity to get used to them. The CDC has recommendations on how to do this safely. I hope this video helps to give you an idea of how to monitor heat stress and how you can prevent heat-related illnesses. If it did, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks so much for watching and until the next time, take care and stay safe. Hi, Rachel from Ally Safety here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the Ally Safety Toolbox Talk membership at AllySafety.com. There, you'll find an entire library of videos that are created to make safety entertaining. I'll see you there at allysafety.com.